Oh. Ow. I long for a world that today we would laugh at. A political economic system. Fuck. Our governments serve business and the rich. The common people choose their rulers, but have no say over the... the, 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 the. An economic system driven by profit and pro <laughs> Sam, my boy! Yeah, Sam, I'm talking to you. I saw you on that last episode of Game of Thrones, and holy shit, boy, you got roasted harder than King's Landing. There you were, with the highest lords and ladies of Westeros. Queen Cersei had just died, and then the Conqueror, Queen Daenerys, the one who just killed Cersei had just died. And so now you all were trying to choose a new goddamn king or queen. And then you, Sam, with your usual stroke of fucking genius, came up with a goddamn bomb-ass idea. We represent all the great houses, but whomever we choose, they won't just rule over lords and ladies. Maybe the decision about what's best for everyone should be left to Oh, everyone. Fair point. And how did they react? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should give the dogs a vote as well. I'll ask my horse. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed at you, Sam. They laughed at you. Oh, Sam, you poor bastard. Oh. Trueborn, actually, but you know what I mean. Nothing wrong with being a bastard, kids. Not by the literal Jon Snow definition. Hell, my mom's a bastard, and she's cool. But don't worry, Sam. We're not laughing at you. We, the audience, we laugh at them for laughing at you, Sam, because we're familiar with what you're talking about. We call it democracy. To them, it's a ridiculous utopian dream. To us, it's just normal life. So, we know that our way, which is supposedly democracy, is not only possible, it's also better than their way. Better than monarchy and hereditary rule. It really makes you think, though. We, the people of today's modern world, we laugh at those noble-born idiots for laughing at democracy. But what do we laugh at? In what way are we the idiots? What ideas do we dismiss as totally ridiculous, utopian, impractical, unfeasible? Ideas that, in reality, might not only be possible, but also better than what we have now. Good questions, right? We'll get back to them soon. In our world a few hundred years ago, when the idea we call democracy started to go viral, a lot of people reacted the same way as those lords and ladies. As Victor Emmanuel III said, In Italy, they are already speaking about a republic, but keep in mind that there is nothing less suited to Italians. The Italians are individualists, and a republic will become the cause of confusion and disorder. Wow. Thanks for that bit of bigoted wisdom, Victor Emmanuel III. Now who the hell was this guy anyways? Oh, he was the king of Italy. How strange that he should oppose elected government. But it wasn't just the kings who thought democracy was ridiculous. Even for a peasant or factory worker, it's hard to think beyond the boundaries of your society. They were products of their time. Which is why I was so goddamn impressed with you, Sam, for imagining beyond those societal boundaries. And rather than be a product of your time, you looked time right in its face and said, Go fuck yourself, time. You don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do, goddammit. But most of us don't do that, Sam. It's as true in my world as it is in yours. But back to your world, Sam. After those lords and ladies dracarsed the fuck out of you, you sat back down, and then Tyrion suggested that the one to be chosen king be none other than Bran Stark, also and more accurately known as the Three-Eyed Creepy-Eyed Raven. Tyrion gives a really inspiring speech about why Bran should be king, but then Bran's sister Sansa says, Bran has no interest in ruling, and he can't father children. Um, yeah, thanks Sansa for letting Erwin know my dick don't work. All hail Bran the Broken Dick. But Tyrion ain't phased by Bran's broken dick. In fact, he thinks it's a good thing. Good. Sons of kings can be cruel and stupid, as you well know. 
This will never torment us. That is the wheel our queen wanted to break. From now on, rulers will not be born. They will be chosen on this spot by the lords and ladies of Westeros to serve the realm. Tyrion proposes something quite different than what you did, Sam, but it's still progress. Baby steps is better than no steps. Uh, at least he won't get another Joffrey. <laughs> but Tyrion seems to overestimate the size of the step. What in reality is a baby step, he seems to see as leaping to the finish line. Just listen again to what he says to Grey Worm. That is the wheel our queen wanted to break. Tyrion, of course, is referring to what Queen Daenerys Targaryen, breaker of chains and mother of motherfucking dragons, said to him back in season five. Daenerys had said that she wants to take her armies to Westeros and take the throne as her own. But Tyrion tells her that the odds are not looking good because she does not have any of the noble houses on her side. House Targaryen is gone. Not a single person who shares your blood is alive to support you. The Starks are gone as well. Our two terrible fathers saw to that. The remaining members of House Lannister will never back you, not ever. Stannis Baratheon won't back you either. His entire claim to the throne rests on the illegitimacy of yours. That leaves the Tyrells. Not impossible, not enough. Lannister, Targaryen, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell. They're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. It's a beautiful dream. Stopping the wheel. You're not the first person who's ever dreamt it. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. Daenerys wants to break the wheel, but what does it mean to break the wheel? She never tells us, but it's pretty clear she sees the current system as oppressive to those it rules. Tyrion seems to think she was talking about hereditary monarchy and the bloody power struggle by noble families that results from it. To Tyrion, if the king or queen is chosen by lords and ladies rather than born into it, then boom bam bing, the wheel is broken. That is the wheel our queen wanted to break. <laughs> but Tyrion, god damn it. Lords and ladies rule over fiefdoms and they're born into it. That's still hereditary rule and now they're the only ones choosing the king or queen? That's still a goddamn wheel. But you took it further, Sam. You suggested that everyone get a vote. And some of us Game of Thrones fans, we even came up with a theory that this is how Game of Thrones would end, with hereditary rule being replaced by democracy. Yes, democracy, giving the people a say. And when the people have spoken, the wheel is broken? We believed that democracy would fulfill Daenerys' wish. It would be the true breaking of the wheel. It's strange that we would think such a thing. After all, our world is very clearly not one that is wheel free. Sure, we get to choose our rulers, but we are still ruled. We are still crushed by the wheel. We just get to choose the spokes. What would it really mean to break the wheel? What would that world look like? And if someone described it to us, would we laugh? I'll ask my horse. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism, rulers elected by popular vote. Is this the best humanity can do? I fucking hope not. I long for a world that we today would laugh at. A political economic system that today would sound ridiculous, impossible, utopian. Only in such a world could the wheel truly be broken. In some ways, Sam, our world is not all that different from yours. You have your haves and your have-nots and we have ours. Worldwide, the top 1% of our population owns 40% of the wealth. The top 26 richest people, 26, own as much wealth as the bottom half of all humanity, 3.5 billion people. There are some who live in the utmost luxury, while multitudes of people are literally starving because they can't afford food dying of curable diseases because they can't afford medicine, sleeping on the street or tent cities because they can't afford a home. And even more of us, though better off than this, are struggling day after relentless day just to keep our heads above water, working a job we don't like under conditions we don't control. And even though we get to choose our rulers, they don't seem a whole lot better at serving our interests than your rulers do. 
So, Sam, the idea you recommend, which we call democracy, is not enough to break the wheel. Our world is bitter proof of that. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, the world grows enough food to feed everyone on the planet, plus an extra 3 billion. So why then are 821 million people starving? And why every year do millions die from hunger? Research has shown that the income of the richest 100 people is enough to end extreme poverty worldwide four times over. They could end extreme poverty and still have three quarters of their income left. So why then does poverty still exist? Starvation and extreme poverty are dramatically tragic, but our world is filled also with the mundane tragedies of those who are relatively fortunate, wasting away in jobs we don't like, jobs that leave us empty, unfulfilled, and with too little time or energy for our dreams or passions. And this is a damn shame, because we could do so much more than end poverty. We have the industrial power and the resources to provide everyone on Earth with everything they need, not only to survive, but to thrive and to flourish and fulfill their potential. Consider all our factories and technology. Consider our human capacity to build, to create, to invent. What could we achieve if all this industrial power and creative power and labor power was used in an intentional way for humanity's common good? Here's just one example. We could automate all the boring jobs so that human beings could spend our lives learning, being creative, having fun, traveling the world, savoring more time with loved ones, pursuing our dreams and passions. We'd still work, but we'd do work we find meaningful, and we'd have more flexibility and choice over how we spend our time. And sure, we probably can't automate every boring job, but the ones that remain we can share using job rotation so that nobody is stuck doing something boring day after day. That's pretty different than today's world where automation is like the fucking scary ass boogeyman coming to create massive unemployment and misery and fucked overness and just ah. We have all this power in our industry and labor that we could use to lift humanity's quality of life to new heights, but instead this power is enslaved in the profit motive. Our entire economy is focused on the pursuit of profit. And where has that gotten us? What has it gotten us placing profit above all else? Profit before people, profit before the planet, profit before our well-being, profit before even our survival, profit even if it kills us, even if it causes civilization to collapse, even if it descends us into dystopia, even if it gives us the darkest timeline. Every time a corporation makes the headlines for doing some shameful, fucked up, evil shit, whether it's sell weapons to human rights abusers, cause a food crisis, cause a water crisis, dump toxic waste so people get cancer, sell cars that they know will kill people, sell products they know are infected with HIV, charge unaffordable prices for medicine, literally kill babies, do shady banking shit that destroys the economy, do all kinds of shit that destroys the environment. Whatever it is, they do it for what? For profit. Every motherfucking time. Profit is like the Iron Throne, driving us mad, driving us to forget our empathy, forget our compassion, forget our sense of justice, driving us instead to destroy, destroy, destroy. Sam, if you lived in our world and could observe and contemplate the way we live, maybe read a bunch of our books, which I know you love to do, and don't worry, you don't have to steal them. We have something called a library. I'll explain some other time. You might, after all this observing, learning, and contemplating, decide it was time we try something different. If profit has such a corrupting influence, you might say as you stand boldly before us, then why do you have an economic system that's based on the pursuit of profit? Why not instead have an economic system based on the pursuit of human well-being? A system where the goal is to enable everyone to live an enjoyable, fulfilling life. Oh fuck, I'm just terrible at doing your voice, Sam. I hate to say this, but if you stood before us and said that, We'd laugh at you. Oh, you sweet summer child. Who are you, Jon Snow? Because you know nothing. 
Don't you know, Sam, that profit is the greatest motivator of all time? Don't you know that profit is the thing that drives people to invent, to create, to produce? Don't you know that without profit, production would grind to a halt, industries would shut down, store shelves would empty, and society would collapse? This is what we believe, and we're so sure of it, so confident, that any suggestion of a system without profit makes us laugh. And so we allow profit to reign. You think we live in a world without kings? Profit is our king. Profit rules us all. Profit burns us all. Profit is the wheel that crushes us all. An economic system driven by profit combined with private ownership of the means of production is the root cause of our world's humongous wealth inequality. And the wealth inequality in our world, Sam, is in a way more disturbing than the wealth inequality in your world. You live in a simple agricultural society with a low level of productivity. If you shared the wealth equally, people would be better off, but nobody would be prosperous. But we have an advanced industrial society with a high level of productivity. If we shared wealth equally, we could all have a high quality of life. I'm not talking about spoiling us with a new iPhone every year or a different pair of Jordans for every day of the week. I'm talking about truly enriching our lives. We could remove the economic obstacles that block our choices, finally be free to pursue our passions and live our life in a way that makes us happy. That's my imitation of a happy person. At least that's what I think happy people are like. I don't know, I, I don't think I know any. Of course, this slogan of wealth equality is simplified. It's not about taking the wealth and just chopping it up and giving everyone an equal slice. It's about using our amazing capacity to create wealth, our labor and industrial power, using that for the good of humanity, and then giving everyone equal access to the benefits of that wealth. If the income of the richest 100 people is enough to end extreme poverty four times over, that's just a fraction of what we could achieve. And so, Sam, with all this in mind, you might stand before us and ask another question. Well, in that case, you might say in a voice sounding not at all like your own, why don't you share the wealth equally? And of course, we'd laugh at that too. We'd laugh so hard, we'd nearly choke like it was the goddamn purple wedding. That's a beautiful dream, equality. But... You're not the first person who's ever dreamt it. If you knew our history, Sam, you would know that it wasn't too long ago that this dream became a nightmare. The pursuit of equality led to tyranny, and if we pursued equality again, no doubt it would turn out the same. But didn't every country that tried this use the same method, more or less? So, what's your point? Well, what if you tried a different way? Yeah, Sam, like that would work. No matter how we go about it, equality will always lead to tyranny. Always, always, always. This is what we believe, and we're so sure of it, so confident, that any suggestion of wealth equality or socially owned means of production makes us laugh and laugh and laugh. The concern of tyranny is legitimate though, but it's a concern that marks all our societies. Tyranny is alive and well in our so-called democracies. Not as bad as in dictatorships, but bad enough. The state tramples human rights, tramples our freedom. Our governments serve business and the rich. The common people choose their rulers, but have no say over the decisions those rulers make. In that case, why not get rid of the state? Oh god, it's like I keep getting worse at your voice every time I try. If politicians and statesmen don't serve your interests, then why have them? All the positive things that governments do, couldn't they be achieved without concentrating power in the hands of a ruling elite? <laughs> <laughs> oh Sam, I'm sorry I had you say these things that make us laugh at you. I put words in your mouth and that's not right. To tell you the truth, these are things I want to say myself, but I'm afraid of being laughed at. So I pretend you're the one saying it, Sam, so that the people laugh at you, not me. I'm a coward, Sam. I'm a goddamn coward. Enough of me putting words in your mouth. Let's get back to what you actually said. Maybe. The decision about what's best for everyone should be left to, well, 
everyone. <laughs> <laughs> These lords and ladies laughed at you because they're products of their society and believe that monarchy, despite its bloody, bloody flaws, is right both practically and morally. As for us people of the modern world, we believe that capitalism in a supposedly democratic state, despite their considerable flaws, are also right, both practically and morally. In case you're wondering, I'm a libertarian communist. In a nutshell, it basically takes the ideals of communism, like equality and all that good shit, and combines it with the ideals of liberty, freedom, and things like that. And it tries to just mash them all together. But I don't want this video to be pushing a particular ideology. I just want us to open our minds and consider our options. There are several proposals for alternatives to capitalism and government. Alternatives so radically different we laugh them off. But maybe we shouldn't be so quick to laugh. We're all products of our time and our perceptions of what is and isn't ridiculous are inevitably distorted by that limitation. Some of these ideas we laugh at may not be as ridiculous as they seem at first glance. I mean, yeah, a lot of them are probably gonna be shitty, but, you know, look into them first and, and then decide. Proudhon once said, I dream of a society in which I would be guillotined as a conservative. I feel the same way, except for the guillotine part. As much as I love guillotine memes, I don't want to lose my head. I'm quite attached to it. And a society that would execute people for having shitty beliefs? Um, no thanks. Well, Sam, thank you for listening to my weird thoughts. It's been a real pleasure watching you on Game of Thrones all these years. Give my love to Gilly and to all the King's Landing crew. My boy Tyrion, my girl Brienne, my boy Davos, that crazy ass Bronn, my boy Podrick, and even that creepy new king of yours. And give my love to John when he comes to visit, which I'm sure he will. And to anyone else besides Sam who watched this, why? Did you fall asleep with YouTube on autoplay? <laughs> well, hopefully you liked what you saw, and if you think this video has a message worth sharing, please do share it far and wide. And give this video a like, because the more likes a video gets, it's actually more likely to appear in people's recommended videos. But if, on the other hand, you think this video sucked, then leave a comment telling me why. I appreciate negative feedback because I'm always looking for new reasons to drink. Where are the whiskey at? Ah. Hey, look at that. Now this is a wheel I can break. <laughs> we did it! We broke the wheel! Mm. <laughs> I'm just breaking little wheels all day up in this bitch. Like, what, you ain't got nothing on me, wheel. Mmm.